Oh boy, this is what a time it is. I put my stuff on. This is this is this is might be a little long. Put on my put on my old goon cap. Of course, battle is about to happen. You know, In fact, we're talking. Let me get one of my buttons up here. Oh, here's the appropriate one. Put on <laughs> Patrice Lumumba button. Should I put on my tap now? We'll put on my hand. Put on my hand. Patrice Lumumba button. Why? Because we talking cool. <laughs> cool. Well, I don't know. It's cool. Like, I guess it's just not. I guess like it. it's cool. Put my glasses on too. See where I'm going to happen here. Ah, ready. Uh, oh, well, that poor my thing. <sighs> Got to have a drink for this. Put a little lemon there. Come on, real lemon. Just a, just a tad, just a little bit of lemon. Just enough. Oh, yeah. So I'm going to do lemon. So I'm going to do that. Squeeze it anymore. Some, get some uh, seeds in there. I don't want that. Chlorophyll. A little chlorophyll. I know, you all don't like it when I lick the bottle. But it's my enzymes in there. If it breaks down or something like that. I'm the only one. Okay, no matter. And look what I got. Urban Remedy Organic Golden Turmeric. It, it's nighttime. Oh, no, I'm putting the golden turmeric in here. I have this tonight. Going to need something. Something healthy. Because you got to prepare yourself for the battle. Oh, it's more like space. I love doing this. Wait, wait. Hold on a second. Do I have this right? Here we go, right? There we go. Well, let me tell you what happened. You know, I was coming back from the ATOS conference, you know. Uh, you know, anyway, it was like a, I started on a Sunday, Sunday morning, whatever it is. I knew it was going to hit hit town, hit New York, you know, uh, uh, like Monday, you know, Monday, like 6 o'clock, 7 o'clock at night. Because I had to take a bus. It don't matter. But it, anyway, I was coming from Chicago. I told you about that stuff. And I saw a sort of joker and all that stuff. Anyway. Well, as we get into New York, I mean, New York State, up there in Schenectady, come on down. I check my phone. You know? Because you get intermittent service. You know, I don't know why. You, the U.S. is not hooked up like other, like, you know, say Singapore or something like that, you know, no, the South Korea, you know. The internet is lacking here in the United States of North America. You would think technologically, whatever have you, because there's little, little little places where you can't get no internet at all. Probably poor, you know, actually poor places. Oh, yeah. Mm. This is quite good. Little lemon, turmeric, turmeric, whatever. What's in this turmeric? What do they have here? Share my good... This is my regular glasses. I need my reading glasses. All right, man, this tastes good. Let me put my reading glasses on so I can read this. Y'all hold on a second. It's gonna take a while. You have to stay. This is for the record, man. Cause something happened today, man. When I checked that thing, put on my new reading glasses. I can read this. Ah. Now, oh, look at that. Reading glass. I'm gonna put it down like that, like they're supposed to do it. Here we go. Oh, very good. Urban Randy, turmeric. Cashew, um, coconut, vanilla, mocha root, ginger, monk fruit. Wow, I gotta get this stuff more often, man. This sounds good. Hmm. And, well, let me take these back off. Tell old people, do they gotta keep on changing glasses, you know? Anyway, Frank, let me not do any glasses because we're in, we're in a, we, we, this is like revolution, you know? So I check my phone, I get an email, you know? From Janie, and uh, you know, it says BAI is shut down. Like, what? <laughs> Pacifica Radio in New York, part of the Pacifica Radio Network of uh, five stations in the good old United States of North America, uh, you know, started by, you know, out there in Berkeley uh, right after the World War, World War II, from, from a bunch of pacifists, you know. Anyway. And then, then there's KPFA. Then they have a station in Los Angeles, KPFK. Then you have a station in Houston, uh, KPFT was bombed. Was bombed a couple of times. 
when they cut up, Klan didn't like what they were broadcast. They, they transmitted was bombed a couple of times. Then you have the WPFW in Washington D.C. And then you have WPAI in New York, which was gifted to the to the um, you know to the network, or whatever it is, because or well, gifted to Pacifica at the time. I think I think BAI may have been the second. No, whatever. Anyway, they, it was so early that they had to give out FM transmitters to you know this is in California to people. But this guy, I think it's Lou Schweitzer, somebody like that in New York. He, he owned a station. It was a newspaper strike, and he got disgusted with what was happening with the advertisers trying to come to the station. So he gave basically gifted the station to Pacifica. Okay, that's how it's. You can look at the legend later. Let me tell you what happened. So I'm reading this and said, shut down. What are you talking about? I got to do my audio drama in November. How am I? Blah, 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 blah. People are writing. I got people committed. You know, I'm, I even got some actors, you know, actors. I got some people that's going to be in it. All the rest of that stuff. So I'm going like, whoa. Let me find out what's going on. So I call up Jeannie right away. Yeah, what's up? Huh? Yeah, they came in. They took the blah, da, 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 da. What? <laughs> so anyway. I get the skinny, you know. Um, and so there was a meeting tonight. This is Tuesday night. I guess this is Tuesday. I don't know what day it is. This is, day. This is Tuesday. And uh, so I found out from this year, you know, that there, there's going to be a meeting because there's a there's a local board meeting tomorrow. And there's a, then there's a Pacific National Board meeting on, like, Thursday in the city, in New York. Anyway, so we go to this meeting tonight. I should get my notes. I don't need my notes. I'm just going to tell you how it is. And it seems as though, <laughs> this thing was in the months in the making. There's, uh, the, I don't know, the, now, there's some people in California, let's put it that way, that think that they could take over the Pacific Network. Now, I've been through a lot of coups at WPAI. That's how I got prominent because I was minding my own business, doing my technical thing, helping Bernard with, with emanations and stuff like that. And then they kicked all the, they kicked a lot of black females out of the station. What is this guy, uh, 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 Erickson, you know, Steve Erickson, whatever his name was. So that caused a, a big ruckus. You know, there's, in fact, there's a famous, no, famous, there's a picture at, at Village Voice at the time. You know, you could see a group of us with some more, um, some more I, mean, I know Lombe was there, whatever have you. I'm right there, you know, in the picture, the people that, that resisted the coup. I forgot what we was called. It was called something. Okay, so that, that passed. And, uh, you know, the, 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 I think that's when Pepsi got kicked, kicked off the station, too. I'm not really sure. Anyway. So then, uh, oh, Pepsi, by the way, Pe Pepsi Charles, uh, she was my she was my English teacher when I first got out of the Air Force at Livingston College. And in fact, I know about BAI because she she was that was when they was at the um, at the, was was called uh, the church. It was a huge space, you know. You could put anyway. Um, and I, I came there because she was interviewing. She had a uh, uh, County Cullen's widow, you know. And I, you know, County Cullen wrote this poem about, about the rain and stuff like that. It was one of my favorite poems in the whole world. Anyways, I just wanted to meet her, you know, so, I, so Pepsi let me, let me come to the station like that. So I knew about PAI, but I really didn't listen to it, you know what I mean? And then, because uh, I was in school, then whatever, whatever, whatever. And then, um, then in the 80s, uh, what happened when I came back to theater, to do theater, theater was all faction. There was like a lot of cabals, a lot of little things. I didn't like the scene, you know what I mean? So I started doing this like guerrilla radio, you know, calling in. I had my roller blades on. I was calling in stations, you know, LIB and, and uh, XBAI too. And uh, and uh, so then anyway, one, one thing led to another, and um, it seemed to seem so. I was I was listening to the station. I started listening to the station more, and there's like very political talk. Like, it's just music and you know, a place. A lot. It's, a, it's a, a true what we call community radio. See, see, in the states you have you have commercial radio. You know what that is. Then you have community radio. But then uh, Lyndon Johnson created uh, the uh, public radio. You know, uh, the, the the PBS, right? I think, here's my thing, I think he created it, right? Because community radio was a total alternative to what was happening in the public radio. In fact, those are the ones, there was, BBA got famous because they was doing all the reporting on Vietnam and stuff like that. There was a real peace, you know, peace, love, and whatever thing. I mean, you know, people like Bob Dylan came by, you know, Bob Fast, you know. The, the, you, if you know all those shock talks, you, know, you, 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 you enamored with, uh, what's, what's that, Howard Stern, whatever her. He got other stuff from Bob Fast. Bob Fast is the godfather, the grandfather, whether it's the progenitor of, you know, talk, uh, of, of, of um, you know, freeform radio. I mean, don't, don't believe anything else you hear. Bob Fast is a great guy, too. Anyway, um, so, uh, uh, um, um, and so, so I'm up here trying, trying, trying to help out, whatever have you, and then we're going along all right. Then, 
Something else happens. Another coup. Here's what happens. They get this um, guy, uh, this new station manager, John Simon, and he um, and he says some things are going to be changed. And, and because of that, the whole thing, I guess, with the, with, with Erickson that came, with whatever happened with that, with you know, they said they was going to hire a minority to be a, a next the next program director. So they had this big meeting. The minority they hired. This is like 1980. I don't know, five something like that, or whatever it was for. Yeah, 85 something like that. And um, they hire John Scagliotti. And what's his bona fides of being um, um, a minority? Wait for it. He's homosexual male. <laughs> I was stupid enough to say, excuse me, I thought you were going to have an on, but that was on their list. And the act got banned, whatever. I'm not banned, but, you know, they just put something on the ground. I was trying to get an air program on the air. They wouldn't let it on. Actually, what happened, interestingly enough, now John had, John Scott Gagliotti went on vacation, and Giselle Mills came in. She was the ostrich. They made her the ostrich. It's a point in people, you know. And uh, she's a sister. I, I, I think she was also a lesbian or something like that. It doesn't matter. Anyway, so she was uh, acting program director. So she put me on the air. Ta -da! That's how I got normal radio on the air. Let me go. I'm trying to go. I'm not trying to go fast. I'm going slow. This got to understand this. So now, we, now I have to understand, between the time I started at BAI in 82 and the time I did my, started doing my program, I think it's 86, right? You said, well, what was the guy doing? Especially when Bernard asked me what did I want to do. I want to I want to do radio drama. You know what I mean? Mm. What to, well, I was busy learning all of the, the BAI's fractions. You know, it had a lot of fractions. So I was Basically, and now bringing myself doing favors for all kinds of fractions or whatever. In fact, my program, my first program, a limited series, was because the arts, the, uh, the, it was the director of drama and literature at the time, uh, Rick Harris. He, they put me, him and, and Tom Whisker put me on in the air because Tom was going on vacation. He was doing something. No, he was going on vacation. He was doing the um, the BAI crash fair, and it was too much, you know, to do both things. So they let me have a limited series just doing his time slot. He did a thing called Weaponry, but I wasn't doing Weaponry. They let me do anything I want. That's why we had that program. Live wire, Tony Sloan on the radio. That was a, ooh, what a program. That was amazing. Anyway, so I, but, but whatever. So uh, anyway, I finally got no more radio, I'm on the air. Um, and then it was a weekly program. It was like three hours in the afternoon, something like that. Very, very unique program. I had a staff. I, I created this whole staff. It was like 18, 17 people. I was a lot of people, you know, I had, I had and I had a lot of people doing stuff, you know. I had news people doing rotation. I had, uh, uh, you know, I I had a uh, uh, oh James Small was a was a historian. I had I had a uh, um, uh, uh, herbologist. Uh, 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 um, uh, uh, had a herbologist on staff. We had um, we had interns. I had people doing the myot. All kinds of things, you know. Anyway, so anyway, uh, uh, so. Um, so I'm on the air, and then uh, there was no there, there, oh Scagliotti and them that somehow they they were gone, you know I mean? and then uh, all kinds of things happened, and then I finally for the first reason I started doing all my radio drama. But I was I was doing radio dramas anyway, but then um, I became the um, uh, what's called a production engineer. But even that was strange because I went for the job, I was uh, uh, and I didn't get the the job. Somebody else got the job, but they came into the station, went one time. Into the production thing, saw what the thing, and walked out. They called me up and said, "Hey, you got the job." That's how I became production engineer for WBAI. Then, then, and then the the, the arts department was it was like a disaster. I mean, like I, I was putting them. Oh, they. I'm sorry. Somewhere in there, they combined the the uh, drama literature department, which is my department that I was in, you know, doing doing plays and stuff like that, and the, the theater reviews, you know, the film reviews. They combined it for budgetary reasons, I guess, with the music department, so it became the arts department. But once they did that, nobody could administer the department. There was like, nobody could do this job. And, you know, it was the department was suffering. I'm like, I'm like damn, man, these guys. So when they put out a thing to be the arts director, I just said, look, whoever's going to get this job, they got to beat my resume. I wasn't, I didn't want the job because I was production and then having a whole plot to do something else. You know, I was going to go just try to work three days a week and go back to school and stuff like It was a really interesting thing. Anyway, so what happened, they interviewed, I, I totally forgot about it, did my interview, whatever it is. And then what happens is I got the job. I'm going like, ooh. So I tell them, look, I'm an artiste. I didn't say it like that. You know, I, you know I, I got some other things to do. I'll do this job for four years 
You know what I mean? And because my own only uh, management thing was as a stage manager, so I actually treated the department like like it was a production. That's what <laughs> I assigned people to do stuff. You know, blah, 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 blah. And the department was very successful. It was unbelievably successful. Then, I started, then because I became arts director, I changed up. Up until then, I was doing like black plays, you know, or, you know, plays with that black themes. But then I did plays that were that opened up. And I think the first one we did was uh, was uh, Animal Farm. In fact, I just saw, interestingly enough, I just rode a train up with uh, this guy in Samori, which is, um, uh, 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 which his father is Plato Benjamin, right? I know that. Wow, wow, wow. Plato Benjamin played boxer in, in when we did Animal Farm. These things come around. Anyway, well, he's on the station now doing, doing sports in the morning or something like that, you know, little sports segments. And we was talking about various things. Okay, anyway, back to the story. So, you know, so successful, you know, I did these huge audio, audio drama. They started at the station. They got bigger and bigger and bigger. We was at the New York Shakespeare Festival. You know, just, that, that is, now of course, Joseph Pep Theater. We, we had a way we could wire up any any theater. So when a the theater was down, we would use that to do be big audio dramas. So it was very successful. Station, and I did them just to bring the station together because the station was sort of fragmented. And I knew that. And so I was trying to bring all of them. No, all, all the department, news people, um, public affairs, arts, put them all together in these plays. You know, we did Alice stories, we did a bunch of uh, Phantom Toe Booth, you know, just Phantom, Phantom we did a bunch of stuff. Anyway, legendary. That's what it was. Uh, now, did we, did we have it? Then, uh, then things started to, then I left, you know what I mean? Because I said I was going to do four years. Some more, some more Marks was program director. So he asked me to stay another year. I just stayed another year. Then I went, poof. <laughs> I was out of there because I had to do my, my art thing, you know? I started traveling the world and stuff like that. Okay. Or well, traveling the world more, I should say, because I started traveling in 1989. Okay. I'm going to get to the point. Just relax, relax. I'm going to get to the point. So so then what happens is um, uh, somewhere in there when I was traveling, I came back and forth, back and forth. And I still would do like normal radio specials every now and then. Uh, but then there was another coup. This was the famous coup, like the, the, what they call the Christmas coup, with Trish Lee and Bernard and whatever was like that. This is the one that got they got that got democracy. Now you know Amy kicked off, kicked out of the station. You know they reset up in the firehouse. That's when I became the engineer for Democracy Now because you know so many people could engineer it, uh, but but Matthew could engineer it. But he was he was he was he was my replacement with arts director, so he was management. So he really couldn't. It was a kerfuffle. So it was a uh, it was a, it was a union thing, whatever have you. So I became. So I took over the engineering for democracy now. Uh, of course, Earl was doing something. He was the engineer too, but he was doing something else. I forgot what he was doing. So they set up the studio. Then we was in the firehouse. So I did the democracy now. Then the whole, the, whole, uh, the, you know, the planes, you know, the, the uh, 9-11 happened. We, you can look in the, the archives of uh, democracy now. We was just a radio program. You'll hear my voice you know, when we do the 9-11 thing. Then... Uh, then, then we, then we found out. We found out. You know, um, this guy Rick, Rick Jurgens. He came up one time where we were up the, the Garrett in there in down, downtown Community Television. You know, uh, John Albert's place. And he came and said, uh, you know, well, why don't you just open the cameras? Huh? I'm looking at Amy. Amy's looking at me. Look at so this is a satellite studio for you know MNN, the, the Manhattan Neighborhood Network, and the cable thing. So they opened the cameras, and then one thing led to another. Up here. Then then democracy now started the, the visual broadcast. You see those early times of interesting got newspapers on the walls. Yeah, it was very fun. Anyway, and then as you this evolved, evolved, evolved. I had my little incident with the C, so I was out of the staff. I was I was I was gone. I had to be gone anyway because you know. I'm constantly battling with Amy. Let's just say, well, let's just put it this way. I'm difficult <laughs> to be with. I'm just difficult, right? I see something happen, I just go after it, right? So, so I'm traveling. Then I go. Then I go to Africa, you know. And, and every once in a while, I come back, and then I get this title of arts director emeritus because every time I come back, I would do an audio drama or something to help the station out, or whatever it is. And so, so that's that's where we are now, you know. So now here's what's happened. Well, well let me take back our. Let me be revolution now. Revolutionaries don't wear glasses. Okay. Well, I think he has the glasses on here. Yeah. Oh, some more. Oh, oh, the boomer has glasses on. I guess I can wear glasses. Hi. Put my glasses back on. The boomer wear glasses. He revolution. I can wear glasses. So, so we had a meeting tonight. 
because there's another thing happening. Now, Pacific is not, most of these coups that happened was like internal, you know, they would bring some manager from the outside and the producers would blah, 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 or they point somebody, he mess with the producers. So because, see, BAS producer driven, people don't understand that, you know. You can put any management in you want, they just, because the producers, the producers are the producers, right? That's where the power is. And the engineers, of course, are the engineers. So, anyway, so we had this meeting tonight. These people come from California. They just, like a few months ago, two and a half months ago, something like that, they just named a, a new executive, whoever, of Pacifica Network or something like that. And these, they started plotting because they wanted, they, and here's, I'm just getting this from the meeting. Don't worry. You'll be, you'll get all your info from Facebook. First of all, do not believe anything that's being reported right now in the New York Times or Wall Street Journal or well, Daily, any of those, any of those publications right now. Forget it. In the last few days, because these people came in and did their press releases saying, oh, things, this, blah, 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 blah. Don't believe it. Okay, that's not what's happening. Remember, power lies in the producers. Lots of producers talking to you. Don't believe these any kind of management type talking to you about anything. Anyway, so these Canadian people came in and illegally bust into the station, started taking things apart, took the uh, 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 um, what's that? The, the the emergency alert system, you know, thing that, that if you don't have this on, if you don't have this, then you can't broadcast any radio station. Took that, go through some things. You know, bro just broke into the station. Let's put that. Had two thugs with them. These people from the from, but from California, and it's like, what's going on? Because what they want, they want to basically take WBAI and dismantle it, take all you know, because we make the most money, even though we're in the but we, in in this market, because in New York market, and these other stations, well, Pacifica is struggling because of a number of things, and so they think that by by by, by dismantling uh, BAI, they would have a whatever, I don't know what they think. It's, so they wanted Pacifica, Pacifica America, I think they want to call this new network, where basically they take our frequency and still program it from, uh, you know, from from, KPA, from California. Ah, oh, little do they know. Anyways, and, and we'll just hang on a word. It sounds like they want to make a new Air America or something like that. You know, it's like the, the little bit to the left, the center kind of thing. Well, see, BAI is radical. That's what we are. How else can I do an audio drama? I'm, I'm planning to do audio drama. That's my whole thing planned out. So the promos goes are building up to it, building up, building up to it. Because we do some radical program at the BBBI. I'm just telling you like that. They know nowhere else in the world, believe me, nowhere else in the in the nation for certain, but certainly I should say, no, nowhere else in the world do you. In fact, I had a, uh, when I was teaching at, uh, teaching at uh, University of Cape Town, I, I played a segment of, of, um, of no more radio. They said, "Whoa, you could do radio like that." I said, "Yeah, you know." Anyway, back to the point. So these people got this grand idea, and they went and then busted and changed the locks and everything like that because we had three three eighty eight uh, Atlantic Avenue right there in Brooklyn, off of Bond Street, of course, adjacent to the House of Lower Church. That's how radical we are. We we next we we next to Herbert Daughtry's church, you know. Anyway, it's called a group, uh, Brooklyn Commons. And um, oh, man, and a lot of events come there, you know, that, that happen there. But we're upstairs. But sometimes we use that downstairs spot, a uh, space. Uh, you know, uh, Melissa allows us to use that uh, to broadcast and do something. In fact, tomorrow night there's a front um, uh, off the hook. Uh, uh, Emmanuel, Go uh, Emmanuel Goldstein, his, his crew, they're going to be there. I, you know, I'm the one that. Uh, well, he says I trained him in radio. I didn't, but I'm, I trained a lot of people in radio. I have a lot of radio children, a lot of radio grandchildren now. But I think they wanted, so I'm going to go there tomorrow night. I was going to go to Virginia right then, but I'm going to wait. I'm going to go there, support them, support Melissa, support the station. Uh, anyway, so the uh, the lawyer got involved. I'll, I'll try to, I got some raw footage of what happened at the meeting tonight. So maybe I'll put that up with the uh, with, with our lawyer, Arthur. He, 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 was, he did a yeoman job. He was in all court all day yesterday, you know. And so anyway, he got this whole thing happening. And so these, 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 I don't, I don't even, I won't even dignify to say they're thugs because they're stupid. If they're thugs, they're stupid thugs trying to take over WBAI. Come on, that's the that's the last thing you want to do. You you might as well just let BAI just implode upon itself. That's the best way. You want BAI to, to go away, just leave it alone. That's the only way you're going to beat up on BAI. But now all the producers and everybody, and you, you you don't know how many uh, 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 organizations, how many listeners are so dedicated now. Now, now instead of having an enemy from within, you know, like now we have this enemy from the from from the left coast, you know, from the west coast coming and trying to take over our station.
it ain't going to happen. <laughs> it's, like, you know, it's just not going to happen. It's impossible, right? Everybody's on board. I mean, the management, everybody. I mean, this is, this is I've, I've never seen this kind of coup. I mean, not this reaction to a coup before. So there we have it. That's my little report. I just came from this meeting tonight. It's late. I guess I got to go to bed. But I just want to let you know, <laughs> I being me, T from the Pattersons, taking the train to his bed, letting you know what I only suspect. And also, just pay attention. Don't believe everything you see, but when it comes from the producers of BAI, I think, just, just pay attention. Um, we, we think we have a, we have a new web page now because they, they even took the web page away. They, they they tried to freeze all kinds of accounts, all kinds of things. They, 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 these, these, these folks did. But, you know, we have alternative things we always do. I think it's going to be a, a WBAI, radio, I forgot what it is. Anyway, whatever it's going to be, you know, pay attention to other things. The the, the website they used to have, WBAI.org, you listen to that, I think they reprogrammed it. To, you know, they took down the Wikipedia page. <laughs> oh, Lord, they took down the Wikipedia page. But all kinds of things happened, you know. But just pay attention. It's, it, let me put it, put it this way. This is true radio drama. Right, this is authentic radio drama, which, which for some strange reason, I'm here at the time this thing is happening. A person who's been, been survived to like at least three coups so far at WBI. This is another coup. This is exciting. This is ex whatever it is. Anyway, good night. Talk to you later. <laughs>